Hi, everyone. I'm going to kick this off. It's uh, six minutes after the hour. Um, I hope everyone is doing well on this June day. Um, my name is Diane Keel. I'm going to start this presentation. Um, so welcome to the June community meeting. Uh, here is the agenda for today. I'll have a couple of foundation updates. Um, and then Mike Mendez will talk about a enclave um, that has been installed at Mass General Brigham that has some exciting uh, benefits to the foundation. He'll talk about the ETL working group. And then Michelle Morris will talk about the ontology working group. So first off, I'd like to um, welcome a new board member, uh, Catherine Le Le um, Zugia uh, from UMass Memorial Medical Center. Um, she is a fabulous new addition to the, the group. Um, Sean, I think you've worked with her, right? Yes, yes, I have. Um, where he heads the board of the CTSA uh, external review committee, and I'm on, I'm on that, and I've been on that with her for four or five years. I think she's going to be a great addition to the board. When I spoke to her, she's very, very, um, except of course, excited about joining the board, excited about using EHR data and I2B2 to support clinical research, um, which is exciting. The other really, um, you know, very exciting um, part about uh, uh, her is that um, she's really, really focused on um, global health. And um, she, she and two of her other colleagues were involved in um, uh, developing a new prevention and treatment strategies for um, HIF, HIV infection for uh, uh, um, uh, pediatric patients. Um, and in fact, in 2013, um, Time Magazine actually named her um, 100 of the most influential people in the world. So I think that that's a that's a pretty uh, interesting fact. But I, she's got a lot of energy, and I'm I'm thrilled to um, have her join our board. Next up, the drum roll, please. Now I just got the the um, thumbs up from Peter um, Rice that uh, the I2B2 uh, um, new release of 19.1 is, is ready. And here's the information on how to access the um, documentation and the, the software. I don't know if uh, Mike or Sean or Jeff are on. Do we have a thumbs up for I2B2 as well? Uh, almost. We're like literally after this meeting, I'm having another uh, meeting with uh, Rita and Jeff, and we're going to go over it. Uh, so right now, it's still if you go to that website, the download page, it's still pointed 12A. Uh, but hopefully within like either today or tomorrow, we'll be on 13. Okay, no, no pressure, Mike, no pressure. But you have the release <laughs> notes there, so um, please take a look at it. And Diane, I think for a while, we'll have to make one to, uh, 12a you know also available right in the in the available versions because um 13 is not certified for the shrine used yet it's got to go through a bunch of rigorous testing from the shrine team so um so that might take a little longer okay that's that's great um but anyway so look at the documentation um i don't think we've had a release out for um the last probably two years. So, you know, there's, this is very important, a lot of security issues, a lot of, um, a lot of additional functionality. So please, um, please take a look at it. And don't forget, we're finally gonna be in person in Boston again um, for our, our annual symposium. This time it'll be in September. Um, in the past, we, we did the, uh, the conference in June. Um, we thought we'd push it out a little bit um, further. And um, here is, you can go to the website and here's information about how to register. Um, we're kind of piggybacking the event with the um, Red Cap Con, which is actually gonna be in Boston that um, week as well. So, you know, come, come to the I2B2 conference and then, and then um, certainly if you're interested in Red Cap, um, you, can, you can participate in that event as well. 
So we're, you know, we're still, we're still in the draft phase of the agenda, but I'm, I'm getting pretty. And so this is a little bit messy here, but I just want to give you a flavor of what we're talking about. Um, we're doing a lot of work, as you know, globally. Um, so we have a, a global South panel where we'll talk about the work that we're, um, we're doing um, on the ITB2 side. We also have Paul Harris. Um, uh, I think most of you that, that use REDCap know Paul Harris, um, another icon. And he is going to talk about um, you know, the, the journey of, of REDCap into the global south. And he's very, very interested in partnering um, with us on this, um, in this event. And so we thought we'd have the two speakers and then a, a panel discussion. Um, we definitely will talk about uh, a couple of use cases around ITB2 and COVID. Um, 4C and recover are the, the two obvious ones. We may have others. Um, then we have a section that we're talking about I2B2 technology for the 21st century. Um, this, is, this is something that was sort of initiated by Zach Kohani, who most of you know, he's also the chairman of our board. Um, a lot of open slots here, but we're, we're, um, we're really talking about you know, looking into the future and, and, and um, sharing some things with you. So um, certainly if you have ideas of, of uh, talks that you'd like, or you'd like to, to um, submit a, a talk for a use case, let us know. Um, we're gonna be also having a, a, a talk around the digital twin with uh, a, um, a keynote um, from, from Dell, pretty exciting about, exciting about that. And then sponsors, so, so late breaking, I don't even have this on here yet. We have three sponsors for the event, um, Dell Technology, um, ITTM um, from Luxembourg and uh, Trinetics has also agreed to um, sponsor us um, this year. They uh, were sponsors uh, in the past and, and now they're, um, they're willing to help us out. So I think that's really very, very nice. We will have a couple section, sessions from our European community. Um, and then the, the, the end of the day will, all, will be around technology, um, around our enclaves, around our releases, um, certainly a, a demo of the new user interface, et cetera. So um, I think it's gonna be a great day. Um, the second day is gonna be very much, um, work, very technology workshop driven. So we'll have a, probably an update from our working groups and then we'll have two separate tracks um, an I2B2 workshop, uh, which is something the team has actually done at uh, previous um, AMI confer AMIA conferences um, that has been really, really well attended. So I think that'll be great. And then a separate track for, um, for Transmart. So come to that. Um, I always put the slide in here saying, if you'd like to get involved, we, got, we have three working groups, ETL, ontology, and user interface that um, you can join. They meet on a monthly basis. And then I am going to kick, oh, oh, and of course, if you want to get involved, you can also with our global, um, um, global South effort, you know, let us, let us know, um, you know, Kavi and I would be wonderful, we'd be very happy to talk to you and, and get you involved in those efforts. And the next thing we'll do is kick it off. So, Sean, can you, can you do a two, uh, just a real minute, um, overview of, of the Enclave before Mike jumps into the technical details. Certainly. So the um, same, we, we get a lot of support as you can all see from Dell Giving, which is the philanthropic arm of uh, Dell Technologies where you know they're interested in supporting groups who show, you know, real social impact um, in 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 the work that they're doing, and so the um, one of the things that uh, resulted from that relationship was a hardware donation, which we set up at uh, Mass General Brigham, but for the I two B two community to be able to use, and so. The, the real person behind this has been Mike Mendez uh, in terms of getting this set up and working. There've been a lot of uh, uh, contributions from the MGB team as well. 
Um, but the purpose is that we set up, I mean, it's a, it's a reasonably secure environment. It's not, you know, a free for all, right? So that you really need to go to Mike. He has an active directory uh, login set up. You basically get a virtual machine when you're doing I2B2 work. So when you're working on projects that, you know, are part of um, uh, building a, a new, uh, better, you know, I2B2 uh, and Transmart, of course, um, there is a um, there is a process which then you can say, okay, here's what I would like to do, and um, you know, can I get a virtual machine and access to the synthetic data sets that you know we use for development, and you know the code that exists in um, in the Git lab that exists actually inside the Enclave, which you can then use as part of your development. So it's like you know all those. Um, hardware requirements that you would have to, you know, go in and build things that, you know, contribute to the I2B2 community. We're trying to make that available in the, um, in this enclave. Um, and it should be very secure so that your work would not be exposed to outside of the, uh, of the enclave. And so far we've built out uh, this part that's open to the community called the dev environment. So, Michael explain, um, you know, some of the architecture behind what he's done, and then maybe some of the process of, you know, setting up, you know, when you have something that you want to contribute, um, getting access to the enclave. Great, thanks, Sean. Uh, yeah, so I'm just gonna describe a little bit about the architecture of how it. So as Sean mentioned, it was a gift from Dell. So they gave us a bunch of servers. And so we took three of those servers and actually using VMware, we created this basically cloud uh, compute. And we then, so to the end user, it just looks like a bunch of uh, machines that, that are out there, but VMware does its magic and kind of, move stuff around uh, and does stuff like that. Uh, so what we did is we then took that, those machines and we put them into the DMZ, the demilitarized zone in mass general bring up. And so what that allowed us to do was it was separated from the internal network, but it was also protected from the outside with firewalls. Uh, we then opened up a couple of ports uh, to certain VMs to allow people to access this enclave. Uh, one of those ports happened to be uh, like HTTPS to the web server, which is actually a proxy to uh, various VMs inside the Enclave so that uh, various projects can then demo stuff, which I'll mention when the recover project at the end. Uh, the other one that we opened up was the Horizon client. And so that's how people access the, uh, the Enclave is it's very similar to like remote desktop uh, and that basically you kind of connect up to this IP and then uh, you can then have a terminal, like a remote desktop, desktop terminal. Uh, the benefit of a Horizon Client is you can then customize it and make it as secure as you want or as uh, allow people have access to like copy stuff back and forth where they can literally control C, control V. Um, whether they can mount printers, things of that nature. Um, we don't have any printers, but that's just an example. Um, so that's kind of a general overview of the architecture. Can you go to the next slide? Uh, Diane? I'm trying, Mike. <laughs> oh, okay, <laughs> was it sure if you heard me? <laughs> Oops, I went, okay. Okay, so this is kind of a, a screenshot of kind of what you can, what's kind of available, what you can do in the Enclave. As you can see, there's like, we set up like a, a 10 node shrine network just to kind of connect it to the act demo that has a Cynthia data set on it. And so as you can see in the upper right, uh, that's the query using the shrine. And then we also have like an Oracle, a SQL Server, and a Postgres database with these million Cynthia data sets in it so that you can utilize it. 
Uh, and so that kind of shows like the Oracle connection, Oracle connection, the SQL Server connection, and then the Postgres is in the bottom right. And then in the center is kind of a, just a query using ITV chat. So this is kind of showing using this to do uh, queries against a Cynthia data set. Um, we've actually used the uh, Enclave for multiple uh, things. I wanna thank uh, Kevin for all his tremendous work on the SAML work that's going into 13. And we actually utilize the Enclave for development of the SAML uh, IDP and getting that up and running and testing. So that was great. Uh, can you go jump to the next slide? Uh, so yeah, this is just a query of the showing like there's thousands and thousands of patients in this system. Okay, can you jump to the next page? Okay, so now kind of, so now we went over the architecture, now we're kind of, kind of go over the development uh, aspects of it. Okay, next page. So as I mentioned earlier, we have like three databases an Oracle SQL Server and Postgres with millions of patients on it. We have like the Shrine software on it. Uh, obviously, I to be tone transmodder on it. And we have the ACT ontology. And so there's also, so the, so when you connect up, you allocated a virtual machine, a Windows 10 virtual machine. And on this virtual machine, it has a software already pre-installed on it, such as like uh, Studio, um, uh, Visual Studio, uh, like SQL Server Management Studio, the Oracle Connector, and PG Admin. Uh, there's various, uh, like the ITV to Workbench, and there's various other um, applications that are installed. So that it, it basically gets you off and running uh, with little upfront work. Okay, jump to the next page. Okay, so this is kind of a little bit of a, I guess I should have put this one in the, in the architecture, but it kind of shows you that you're connecting, uh, you first connect up to the uh, virtual machine, uh, the Horizon client. And so from that, you then get like, uh, then, you, then you allocated that virtual machine uh, from the Horizon agent. And so then at that point, you can then access on the bottom uh, like the Wildfly the, or the Oracle Postgres. And then in the far right, it says internal network with Isilon. Uh, so this, <clears throat> so we were, we also got like a big data store, a uh, big file server called I, uh, EMC Isilon. And so we actually mount from that uh, some data. Of some file storage that could be utilized. We also utilize it for backups and other components. But this kind of gives you an overview of kind of how, how you kind of connect up and then you're basically kind of protected inside. Okay, uh, next slide. I think you missed one, yeah. Uh, okay, so this kind of shows like, the admin tool of the Horizon client, a uh, Horizon server, kind of give you an idea of behind the scene how it kind of works, the magic. Uh, so this is just the various desktops. Uh, so normally, what I do is I just create a new, a whole new cluster for each group, and then that group then would have uh, the VMs allocated to them. And then the next page shows. This is what you actually see. And, and as you see on the desktop, these are all the various tools that are installed. And obviously I missed a whole bunch of them, but um, it basically gets you really up and running like Eclipse and then uh, PyCharm, things of that nature. And of course we have a GitLab, so you can check in and check out code into the repository. And so the next page. Okay, uh, computation. Yeah, so, okay, next page. Okay, so basically I'm just kind of talking about this could be utilized for like the digital twin and uh, hopefully uh, be model for uh, various different hospitals and stuff. Okay, next page. And so basically I'm just, Another slide just talking about how the data enclave enables computations on the digital twin. 
And so next page. Uh, and this is kind of like example of someone like say Mary utilizing the tools and then, and then generates the output in the bottom. Okay, next page. Okay, and so, uh, yeah, so this is, now we're gonna go into the exchange area. Okay, next, next page. Okay, and so basically, so once you're actually done your development, we have a GitLab uh, that's already set up so you can uh, check in your code, paste it there. And then we're also looking at a way of kind of doing some type of Dropbox uh, area or something of that nature. So that's kind of a work in progress possibility. Okay, next page. And so this is just an example showing the GitLab. It's uh, gitlab.dataenclave.net. So, and that's just internal. Okay, next page. And so, yeah. So this is kind of uh, some of the ones I was kind of looking at as a way of like setting up a Dropbox within the Enclave. Uh, haven't actually figured out which one of these to utilize. If anyone has any recommendations, they'll definitely very interested in knowing. Um, but these are just a handful of the ones I found out there. Okay, uh, next page. And so, yeah, so basically as a summary, uh, the, the Enclave has been very, definitely very beneficial for various projects, for the release of 13, for the Recover project, uh, uh, tra Transmont's on there and has been worked on. Uh, we're also utilizing it for future enhancements um, in next versions of ITB2. And it's also a great way to have the community help out and utilize it. So, okay, so the next page, which I think is the Recover. So I'm just gonna go quickly over kind of one of the examples, which was the, from the Recover project. and. As probably a lot of you know, the it's a, basically an NIH funded uh, grant dealing with I, law and I, COVID. I, yep. Um, uh, yeah. We might want to. We actually need to get NIH's permission when we want to present on recover. Oh, okay. Okay. It's sorry. Silly. I mean, I'm sorry. It's silly, but that that's just you know, and I've gotten myself into trouble a couple of times. Okay, you heard nothing. I didn't. I never said anything. <laughs> We're erasing this uh, recording. <laughs> okay, so uh, yeah, so I won't talk about this, but right. yeah. yeah, no problem. Uh, so yeah, so if there's projects dealing with the ITB2 trans model or plugins or other things that you guys are interested in developing and working on, um, shoot me an email, uh, shoot Diana an email. Um, the Enclave has be definitely been beneficial in certain areas that you can easily, uh, it has no patient data on it, so it's all fake patient. It's also a way that once you set up your tool, whether it's um, dealing with ontologies or just a new plugin to extract data or whatever, you can easily uh, set it up so that you can then set up a demo. And so then outside people, outside the Enclave can then test it out. And it's easy, quick and efficient to set up versus trying to set it up in house and then trying to get your institution to open up a firewall or allow this web uh, server to be accessible outside. Uh, but then you have the option as well, Azure or Amazon, but then you're going to have to set up with the whole infrastructure, which we already have. So, uh, so yeah. So if anyone's, anyone's interested, uh, definitely give me a ring. Uh, so I don't have any slides on the ETL working group. But, but uh, just to be clear, right? It's for it's for working on I two B two, or correct? Training. Yes. Right. Yeah. Right. So it has to. You have to have a defined project, right? That you wanted to be doing, uh, and then we'll give you the resources. That's what that means. Yeah, exactly, yes. Um, so the ETL working group is actually gonna utilize the Enclave. Um, so we're currently working on ways of getting genomic data into ITB2 transplant. Um, and so we're slicing out a piece of the pie on the Enclave to deal with uh, genomics and we're just 
utilizing various uh, publicly available genomic data sets. Um, I'm going to dump it up on the enclave and then we're going to then determine the best way to actually get the variances into I2B2 uh, data model, I2B2 transplant data model, and then query that data. Uh, if anyone wants to join the working group on this, we're definitely interested. Uh, ping either Diane or myself, I send you the link. Uh, we meet the second Tuesday of every month at 10. We have a great group right now, but yeah, if you want to join, definitely join. Uh, give us a ring. Uh, so I think so. that's it on my side. Uh, I think we have a question about um, do, can the enclave support Linux um, VMs? Uh, yes, it does. Okay. So a lot of the so we have a handful of uh, Windows. Uh, so we have a primary domain controller that deals with uh, the, basically authentication login, but then we have a lot of uh, Linux VMs. Uh, SQL Server, the SQL Server database, is actually running on uh, Linux. Uh, same with the Oracle and Postgres. Uh, typically, the instance that you uh, connect up to the Windows 10, uh, the Horizon is a Windows uh, machine. And then normally, uh, you can SSH to whatever servers you need. Uh, what is the most recent Postgres version? So we've tested it up to uh, Postgres 14. So, you know, but typically it's been 10, I think it's a standard one. And Keith was asking a question about governance. Um, so the, the Enclave is fairly um, new, uh, the implementation of it. We do have a committee on technology that um, would, would take charge of, of any governance. We also have a small um, working group with, um, with the I2B2 leads um, to really talk through a lot of this. So I, I'm just, you know, I just want to, I want to thank Dell for providing us, oops, I'm going backwards again, um, with this technology and really helping us streamline um, the, you know, the, the potential community engagement here, um, because sometimes the roadblock is really setting up the infrastructure, you know, you can walk away from it because it's, it's just too hard, so this has tons of potential and, and kudos to, kudos to a lot of different people, but kudos to Mike Mendez for um, powering through all this stuff and and uh, and doing a lot of this stuff and investigation on his own. So great job, Mike. Yeah, thanks. Any other questions here? Otherwise, we'll jump to um, Michelle Morris. I think um, I think folks know that Michelle um, is a is, is definitely an ontology uh, expert and and was, you know, um, instrumental in, in uh, developing the, and supporting the uh, ontology for, for ACT, um, which is used, you know, all, for, for so many different things. And so we're really thrilled that um, Michelle volunteered to take over the ontology working group for the foundation. And I'm going to turn this over to Michelle and um, so she can do, give us an update. You there, Michelle? Here. So I'm Michelle. Like she said, I work on a handful of uh, I2B2 ontology related things like ACT and GIC and 4C and N3C. And I am the new lead of the ontology work group. Next slide. Um, there are about 40 members from 20 different organizations that drop in from time to time. We have a core group of about 10 to 15 people, um, but everybody's welcome, whether they've been there recently or have been away for a long while. Next slide. Um, like I said, I inherited the group from Campbell who led us for many years, I guess. Um, and since I started, we have drafted and finalized the mission statement and kind of reconfigure the way that we work. Um, we're using the mission statement to drive our work and we're trying to be, um, get opinions from a broader spectrum and 
let it be more of a community resource and a place where we can come and learn from each other. Next slide. So like I said, we came up with a mission statement and our themes are around sustainability, advancement and outreach. Um, for sustainability, we're trying to help each other reduce the resources and effort that we need to maintain our ITV2 ontologies. Um, we're trying to advance the development and functionality and the interoperability of these different ontologies. And for outreach, we're trying to promote uh, activities like 4CE and things like that that are I2B2 based. Next slide. So um, we meet every th uh, third Thursday at noon Eastern time and our the flow of our meetings are pretty similar every month. We start out by sharing any ontology related news or updates for the diff from the different networks that um, utilize uh, I2B2 and I2B2 ontologies like um, ACT, uh, N3C, 4CE, and Trinetics. Um, and then we generally, if available, uh, we have people demonstrate um, some of their ontology tools or things that they learned. So far, we've had demos from Jeff Klan for the Total Dumb Dashboard. Mike Mendez came and he gave us uh, a walkthrough of how to use the I2B2 bioportal tools that Lori Phillips had developed. Um, Kavi gave us a demo of his ontology creation plugin. And Kevin and I, uh, demoed the ontology store, which I'll talk a little bit about later. Um, and then at the end of the meetings, we usually just kind of have an open discussion where we'll take one or more topics and try to dive a little bit deeper into them. Next slide. So this is the ontology store, which is one of the main outputs of the work group so far. Uh, in the work group, we basically, came up with the minimum viable product for uh, ontology store, which is kind of a point and click way to download and install ontologies into I2B2 that are housed on the cloud. Um, we're hoping to release it at the end, by the end of the summer when we have the uh, newer version of the ACT ontology. Right now it just has a bunch of garbage stuff in it, but um, the main idea is that people will be able to store I2B2 formatted ontologies on the cloud and then others will be able to come along and you know, select the ones that they wanna install into their local I2B2. So we're hoping it'll be a great resource and kind of the go-to way of installing and maintaining um, and sharing uh, I2B2 ontologies in the future. Next slide. Uh, and so, the, so the other thing that we do is we get into uh, more in-depth conversations around ontologies, ontologies that we'd like to see, ontologies that people are working on. Um, in the past, we've had discussions about vaccine status ontologies, lots of talk about social determinants of health. And we also talk a bit about ontologies that are inspired by some of these COVID networks like 4C and N3C. For the past couple of meetings, we've actually been in, um, we have had really good conversations about ontology management. So it's one of those pain points that every I2B2 site has. And so we're trying to get a handle on the use cases. And uh, hopefully at some point, once we talk it all through, document and recommend best practices. We've had um, like Rob and Twee from Ocean and Michael, Stacy and Carmen from Mayo and Nan from UCLA share their use cases with us, like how they are currently maintaining the ontologies and what some of the issues are of adapting part of national ontologies and how you integrate that with your local ontologies um, without creating a mess. So that's what we're working on now. And then... In the future, we'll be talking about ontology usability and you know exploring ontologies for data quality and things like that. That's it, next slide. So 
So like I said, everyone is welcome to join us. Um, you can come in and out and, or just participate in topics of your, that are interesting to you. We meet every third Thursday from noon to one Eastern time, and you can join using the uh, Transport website. That's it. Thank you, Michelle. Mm -hmm. Any questions for Michelle? Sure. So I just want to mention that um, you know all of our meetings are recorded and included and available on the website, um, usually within a week after um, the session. So. If you miss a session and you want to check it out, you can. Does anybody have any questions for the group? I'm, I'm still I'm still trying to get people to think about um, you know topics that you'd like to be to include at the September meeting as well. I just want to make sure that it's a valuable meeting. Anything else? Any other comments from anybody? Hello, this is Mark Abagian from the University of Southern California. Hi, Mark. Hi, I had a question about um, looking forward to the ITB2 uh, version um, 1.7.13 release. Um, also, we're interested in incorporating this um, and uh, some of the new technologies in there. Um, with our ACT implementation. And so naturally we want the uh, um, Shrine client to be upgraded to, uh, to match 1.7.13 with the uh, SAML authentication. And I'm wondering if there's any news from the Shrine folks about how soon that might be available. That is a good question. I don't know. Michelle, do you have like any idea? I know you're still wait, you're waiting on the, the new grant, right? We are still waiting on a new grant, yes. Um, yeah, I, I don't have anything to report that there. Yeah, we, we've been in conversations with, with them, but haven't talked to them about it lately. I know that most of Nick's focus is getting the new web client to work with. Uh, well, the, his main focus is the new web client, but to also getting that to work with SAML. But I'm not, I'm not sure what the timeline is for the Shrine and uh, 7, 1.7.13. We'll, we'll get the ITV2 tested with Shrine hopefully pretty quickly, but getting the SAML authentication into Shrine is mm, a different timeline. Yeah, that one's a little bit, bit, you know, so so Shrine is working on um, a 4.0 release, um, although that is not really focused on the ACT network. So let me back up a little bit, but they, they, they are working on SAML. They are working on SAML. Um, but Mark, I can take that back to the Shrine team and, and to um, keep comment about, you know, getting the Shrine project engaged with the foundation. Um, we're very, very involved. I, I mean, I actually... Uh, my, my second hat is with Harvard Catalyst. So I sit with the Shrine teams and we're constantly talking about um, the two projects together. So um, but the tricky part right now is that the ACT um, funding actually ended and there's a new grant that's being, um, funding source that's being spun up. But it, 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 it's, um, what can I say, uh, Michelle, it, it's not quite approved yet in limbo. <laughs> Okay, Limbo sounds perfect. <laughs> as soon as, as soon as that, and, and that will, I, you know, I, everybody believes it's, it's going to happen. Um, it's just a, a matter of time. But as soon as that um, kicks off, then the the the, the act or the inact, I think is the name of the grant, um, will put their priorities together. So we can we can certainly you know bring this back to the you know the teams and start to talk about this. But the development for a shrine is tied to the funding for act. It's not at the point at right now. It is not. 
the 4.0 um, release that we're working on is not tied to, um, this is something that, um, that Harvard Catalyst is, is working on um, separately. Okay, so the uh, so irrespective of uh, act, there could be progress on the um, on the SAML authentication being added to Shrine. There is absolutely progress. There's a, a project, an active project within the Shrine team that uh, is is working on um, SAML. Um, I I personally have been pushing that. Um, it, the hard part about it is when that even if that was done, when that would be ready to released to the app network right it, you're really you're focused on the whole app network right Actually. well we have we have other um, we have another shrine network that we that we're a part of also and so it's okay. interesting for us regardless of yeah. of the status of the act network okay then definitely definitely 4.0 would be available to you and i think the team is trying to get that rolled out um i mean they're targeting uh, to get it rolled out and ready by the um the, by the september time frame because they want to talk about it at the September conference. So yes, absolutely, absolutely. That that's part of it. We can um, we can keep you in the loop on that one, Mark. Thank you very much, Diane. Thank you, everybody. Any other comments, questions, um, issues that you'd like to bring up? Give everybody a few more seconds. Mappy, did you want to say something or maybe he just muted himself? All right. No, I uh, I don't have anything to bring up. Just. Uh happy that Trinetics is able to sponsor the upcoming meeting looking forward to it yes great thank and thanks to Trinetics and all of our our sponsors yeah i'm just i'm very excited about september i'm just you know hopefully you know we we have about we don't have a lot of i'd love to i love it if people that are going to go if they would register so we'd get a better idea um because we're not charging for the conference um, now there is a charge for red cap. Let me, you know, um, cause I'm helping with that conference as well. There is definitely a charge for that. Um, but for, for ITB2, we're not charging this year. So usually when we uh, don't have a charge, people will sign up or, you know, the day before. So we, we have a hard time getting a head count. Um, but it would really be great to know the people that have signed up. A lot of them are from out of town. So, you know, even if it's not a huge group, you know, it's great to, to get together with a few of your colleagues and have some, um, you know, some networking time. So I hope you all can make it. All right, anything else? Nope, all right. I'll let you go back to your day. I'll give you uh, 11 minutes back. Thanks everyone, bye. Thanks, Diane. Bye, all.